Hello everyone, it's Aaliyah. Welcome back to my channel. I'm coming on today with a project share, but I feel like I haven't been on, I don't know, in a while. I mean, maybe it's only been a couple days. I'm sure I could go back and look and see what the last video was that I uploaded, but I just feel like it's been so long since I've made a video. Uh, what happened was, I don't know if this has ever happened to anybody else, but I went through a few days of like complete blankness. Every time I sit down to try to finish my project or start a new project or, you know, do some sort of uh, crafting thing, it was like a blank slate. I had no clue what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it, anything like that. I sat down day after day after day every night when I came from work and it was just like, staring at my craft desk <laughs> looking at all the stuff that I could do oh no but I want to do this and oh it was just it was different haven't never really experienced that before but um last yesterday what was it yeah yesterday uh actually wait today I don't know um a little over a day ago I um was looking through the big pile of um, fabric scraps my mom had given to me. And they're not actually scraps. There's like lots of material. And uh, I saw this one. This is actually uh, upholstery material because uh, they have a... Um, my parents have a condo on Martha's Vineyard, uh, which is a little island off of Massachusetts where people go to vacation but people all also live there year round but um the couch there is upholstered with this so, and when they finished she had some material left over so I pulled this out of the big bag that she gave me and I said you know what I sort of want to do something with this so I sat and I looked at it for a while and slowly my creative juices started coming back and I finished my project so um, this is the standard size, the um, eight and a quarter by four and a quarter, and uh, does have the one signature. And then to wrap it, I just used, uh, I cut a long piece of the, the same fabric, and I just sewed all the way around the edge so it wouldn't fray too much. And then that just wraps around it to keep it closed. So this, I wish you could feel it, but it's so textured. Like these little, uh, let me hold it up close, and I don't know how well that will come through on camera, but each of these little uh, tan threads are actually little threads, and you can feel them, and I, it's just, it makes it, I didn't want to put anything on the cover. Normally I like to put um, something or some sort of collage or something, but this time I just, I love, love this upholstery fabric. So, let's get into it. So on the back, so the base of the cover is cardstock. And then I sewed and glued this fabric onto the front. And then I also sewed and glued uh, the this paper to the inside cover. And I didn't make a pocket on the front cover because I like this image. I don't know. You can see that, but it's just, it's really pretty. And I didn't want to cover it up. So, but I did put a pocket here. And I thought the greens and the blues sort of went with this, even though it's not green. I, or, I'm sorry, it's not blue, but it's green. So I try to keep with the green theme. So on the first page here, we do have a pocket right here. And the pocket here is made out of fabric. It's embroidered fabric that I got from Amore Fabrics on Etsy. And um, on the top here, oops, on the top, I just, it was some of the, uh, like an off cut of the material that I used to make the top of the pocket. And then on the bottom here, these are two vintage buttons. Okay, so um, this, so I have everything in here is tea stained. Um, and this graph paper, since the graph paper does come a little shorter when you fold it than the regular pages, what I did was I just sewed on, oh no, I glued on some of the fabric here. And 
here I do have a whole reinforcer and I didn't put any lace through or ribbon because I know in the last <clears throat> excuse me in the last video I said because of the placement of where these holes are um, see how the top is that fun like ripped out of the notebook look if I tie the ribbon it's gonna affect these so I put the whole reinforcer there but I didn't put any ribbon through and another thing I love about this and I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera but when I dyed the um, paper the lines bleed and then the ink sort of swirls around in the water but the way it came out was has a green tint to it so I thought that is perfect for this journal so you can see that and here is my first tuck spot so you can tuck something behind here but then also there's this little tag here and this tucks down inside here and I'll hold it a little closer so this little A I put an A in there just because well it is the beginning of the alphabet and I had these little cutouts and it was a top one but also A for Aaliyah <laughs> I just put my little mark in the book so that is the pocket so I glue down those sides and then this little tag fits right in there or you can put whatever you want in there and here's another scrap of the fabric and an off cut of the grid paper put a whole reinforcer here put a coffee this one is actually coffee dyed this doily there and um, sort of like a little layering effect so that's there then we move on to here and I just did a little fabric flip there and this was a little wooden button and what I tried to do was match this like light orange um, in the flowers with it and then the sharpie that I used it looked like it was this color but then when I actually colored with it it, it was a lot darker but I thought you know what it's still orange it still can kind of tie it together so I, I did end up putting that on so that flips up and then this opens out for plenty of journaling and then here is a vintage children's book page it's a little dog getting a looks like it's getting a bath and some more of my extra shimmery gold lined paper page and here is a tea dyed coffee filter and I like putting these in because I like the way they feel it's very like clothy feeling sort of and here we have a paper ribbon with a little button on the bottom this is not vintage though this is or is it no this one is not um, I just one that I had in my stash and here is the next tuck spot so you can tuck behind there and on this one you know what let me stand up because I'm not even sure if I'm in camera in frame so this one here um, I did a bunch of different layering so the base of the actual tuck spot is cardstock and then I don't know if you'll be able to see it over that I did sew on some material it's very light um, where is the material it's this material ugh, can't talk sorry this material right here and it's a really pretty pattern though when it was actually put down it's a little hard to tell but it's okay behind that I have some more doily a little piece of the fabric this is a Tim Holtz clock uh, it was on um, a 12 by 12 sheet of paper but I just cut it out and I thought it was kind of cool because it's green so it matched with the whole theme then I layered some laces and put some vintage buttons on there so I thought that was kind of cute the way it came out and here's some tracing paper very thin almost like tissue paper but it's tracing paper that's what it said on the pad very thin though um, and here so we have another vintage book page and it's actually from a recipe book because see here pancakes griddles and waffle molds and that gives you plain pancakes there and some what oh waffles on this side cornmeal pancakes and plain waffles but I just had um this cut of the fabric it's kind of like a corner it reminded me of so I just put it in there as a little flip up 
and another little tuck spot and this one here so we have that corner piece of fabric then here again is that fabric I just showed you sewn first and um, this is where is this from it was from a paper collection and I'm not sure it was a six by six pad that I had and it had a sheet of let me see oh see it had a sheet of all these little different die cut th I mean it's thin but um oh that's really cute I didn't even notice that one the little books um but yeah, it was there, and I liked it, and I've been wanting to use it, so I decided to use it in this book. And it's nice because you can write something on here. And then tuck whatever you want behind. So there's that one. And here's some more of that stained paper that started turning green with a whole reinforcer on top. And then here's the middle of the signature. And the middle of the signature, I decided to put a pocket to hide the um, to hide the binding. I don't know if you can see it down there. Oh, there it is. Yep. But it makes a nice little spot to hold things in, and then you can close it up so things don't fall out. So that's the middle. And now we see the same pages, the other sides of them. And here's a nice little tuck. This, I don't know why, but it kind of, when it came out, it reminded me of cucumbers because the flower's so green. I don't know. It's a cucumber flower. Um, but I put a little paper ruffle there. And then this, um, it was cardstock. And on the cardstock, I sewed some of this fabric, put the little paper flower down, and then put this button in the middle. And then it, it serves as a little tuck spot. And, and here's the other side of that, um... Huckleberry griddle cakes recipe, vintage recipe um, page uh, with the same flip up and the tracing paper again. And this one, I really like the way this one came out. So, like the other ones, it is a tuck spot. And um, I took a square of the fabric from the front cover. I sewed on this piece of cream color fabric. And then I added this uh, flower with a vintage button in the middle. And I just, I don't know, it just looks really cool the way that came out. I like that one a lot. Oops. Oh, no. Okay. And this here, you can tuck something up under there. And I just sort of collaged some pieces I had um, together. So the base is cardstock. Then I put some grid paper in the, um, on it. And then I put, um, here's like a little off cut of that cream fabric. I had this little scrap left over, which I kind of liked. So I put that. And then to bring the pink out, I also put that there. And then put that um, little off cut of the, the cover. And then a little lace trim up there. So it's a little collage-y. And um, you can tuck something up under there. And here's the other side of the coffee filter. And the beautifully sparkly, overly sprayed gold page. This is the other side of the book with a dog. And here, this flips out, but this also is a little hidden pocket right there that you can stick something in. And I don't know if you've noticed, as we've gone through, I haven't used any pattern paper in it. All the paper is just tea dyed um, different regular papers like the line paper, grid paper, notebook paper, plain paper, but there's no pattern paper. That was something I wanted to try different just to see if I could do a journal without any pattern paper. Now, I mean, obviously, I did use some, um, like uh, this is pattern paper as well as this but normally I put pattern paper throughout so this time I didn't just to see how it would come out and I, I really like the way it came out so I may be doing more or ones with less pattern paper so we have this and here is the other side of that graph paper in the beginning that has the little cut from the material 
and I like this one too, this little tuck spot here. Also, like the other one, is made with a scrap of the upholstery fabric. And then I found some, uh, this, it's kind of like a burlap ribbon, but it was, it was like really thick ribbon. Like the, usually the ribbons are this small, but it was wide. Um, so I made a little square there, frayed the edges, put this little butterfly down, and then glued these three on there. So I thought that was kind of cute too. And then that, I believe, is the last page. Yes, it is. So that is the last page. So this one was very fun to create. Um, a lot, not a lot different than what I normally do, but just uh, in terms of not being, um, not that I'm not able to do pattern paper, but trying to do a journal without putting pattern paper in it was really fun so i did have a lot of fun creating this and without the pattern paper i realized that i had to embellish more so i create you know, like all the little tuck spots and the um things like that i created um i had fun creating those i should say because normally i'll just do uh pockets but this one is definitely a lot of firsts for me in here so I did enjoy doing this and I definitely think I'm gonna do something like this again I have to go through the bag that my mom gave me of all the different fabrics because I feel like these fabric covers I'm really really liking so I'm sure that the next few journals that I'm gonna come out with will have these nice fabric covers to them um, I still like this size the eight and a quarter by four and a quarter but I sort of wanted to do something different and I think that's a lot of times where my problem comes from because I, I'm a very um, regular person and I don't mean like in the bathroom. I mean like when I find something that I, I like doing, I normally do it and I usually don't sway too much from it um, and right now I do like this size. And I've been thinking I wanted to do different size journals or hardcover journals, you know, things like that. But then once I start thinking of other things that I want to do, it's almost like it puts the brakes on my creativity. And then all of a sudden my mind goes blank and I can't create anything. So that's the problem I always have. I want to do something new, but I'm always afraid that when I try that, my mind kind of blanks out because I want to do too many things at one time and I can't just concentrate on one thing and then I don't get anything done like with what happened in this past week or so but I'm glad I did do this I'm glad I finished this um I think for my next project I just have to decide what I want to do put everything out of my head and just do it so hopefully you'll see a new project soon I hope it's not going to take another week of blankness but you never know so stay tuned for that and this will be in my Etsy shop. All the details will be below in the description box like I usually put them. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's kind of a long one. Thanks for hanging in there and uh, see everybody next time. Bye.